everybody. Welcome. Uh, I see that we already have a, a good number of people here already. So let's jump in and get started today's webinar, which is why prep with LSAT Max, the third of our back to back to back webinars. If you missed the previous two, they are available for replay both in the LSAT Max uh, app and the online course. You'll see them there as well as on our YouTube channel. And remember, the, the first one on Tuesday was LSAT Basics with Brandon. And the one yesterday was Law School Applications with Yelena. Uh, so definitely make sure to check those out. Speaking of Brandon and Yelena, they are the new co-hosts of our brand new podcast, The Legal Level, which Claire will drop the link in the chat for you guys. Definitely check that out. If you guys have had a chance to listen to it, uh, obviously we, we would love your feedback. Uh, I, I see that Thomas seems to have enjoyed it. Great to hear, Thomas. Um, and obviously we will be getting more episodes live ASAP. And if you have any uh, things you would like us to discuss or any questions, you could always reach out to us at podcast at testmaxprep.com. And so uh, the last housekeeping item here is just highlighting the Q&A feature of these webinars, slightly different from our normal office hours. Uh, you can drop your questions in the Q&A. Um, you can also raise your hand and I can unmute you and you can speak. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna progress through a little presentation about LSAT Max and, and what we offer and, and why we feel we are the, the number one uh, LSAT prep option out there for, for students. Not only uh, today, which I think, you know, particularly with you know, some of the things that have, have happened recently that uh, have kind of uh, assaulted some of our um, you know, norms, uh, but even without that, and, and that's something that we'll, we'll chat with today, and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna share my screen um, and we will dive right in. All right, so as I mentioned, my name is Mehran and I am the CEO of TestMax. And this is a company that I co-founded while I was a student at Harvard Law School. And, and our vision uh, here is to, is to break down the financial and geographic barriers to high quality test prep by doing two things. And, and that is combining unparalleled content with industry leading technology. So again, it's the best content, the best technology. Like two legendary brands coming together for an iconic collaboration that you'll never forget. And that's really the vision. And here you see our five-star rated app in the Apple App Store. And we're gonna discuss what sets our course, our app, our program, our community, uh, apart from uh, all of our competition. Again, we've been ranked the number one LSAT prep course now for three straight years, uh, 2017, 2018, and 2019. And that was before the transition to the digital LSAT and before coronavirus. So I can only imagine uh, what will happen uh, in 2020, going for that uh, elusive four-peat. Uh, definitely seen three-peats before, but a four-peat uh, will we'll obviously be super proud. So here uh, you see our app and the app store. And I just want to highlight the version history here to, to emphasize that you know we are a technology company. If you notice the number of updates here and you compare it with some of the other LSAT apps out there, you notice that we are constantly updating our app. You see version uh, 2020.09 from three days ago. I, I do want to emphasize that my co-founder Jason, our, our CTO uh, is obviously a very talented developer. We do everything in house. And, and I hope that you can see that with how active we are with our, with our app updates, uh, adding new features, adding new functionality for our students. And, and we're obviously going to continue to do that. And so with that, let's dive into uh, the app. And here is what you see as a free LSAT Max user. And I'm gonna go through it obviously as a free user, uh, highlighting all of the free content. And then obviously we can, we can talk a little bit about the paid content as well. But I think in terms of highlighting our guiding uh, principles and, and what really distinguishes us from, from everyone else, I think you know, the free content is sufficient to do that. And so here you'll see all these colored icons, right? Through timing uh, that greet you. And, and all of that is free content. And Really, LSAT Max was designed to address the, the issues with traditional LSAT prep and issues that I experienced firsthand, both as an in-class student and as a teacher for a leading LSAT company before going to law school and, and co-founding uh, TestMax, right? So I, I saw in-class from both perspectives, uh, as a student and as an instructor. And I actually wrote an article about this um, way back in, in 2017, which you'll see here, the case against in-class LSAT prep courses, 
and where I really tried to emphasize why I felt that this model was outdated, inefficient, and not in the best interest of students. And you can actually cross off in class here and replace it with live online, which seems to be really popular, uh, and the same arguments would apply. And, and so you see here, you know, I'm gonna just go through this very quickly. We'll, we'll share the link to this article so you guys can read it if you're interested. But you see variance of instructor quality, set schedules, teaching to the mean, not personalized, limited access. And, you know, something obviously we don't mention in this article, but would, if you've gone out and, and done any uh, shopping around, you see exorbitant prices would also be an issue with the traditional models. And again, since this was written in, in 2017, I think two things have happened since this article came out that further emphasizes why our model is, is superior. First would be the transition to the digital LSAT. For, for those of you who aren't aware, in July of 2019, LSAC unveiled the digital LSAT, which moving from paper pencil, uh, took the exam to a Microsoft Surface Pro tablet in a digital format. And obviously, as the pioneers of mobile LSAT prep, well, mobile test prep with BarMax, uh, which was our first app, uh, but definitely for, for, for mobile LSAT prep as well, we've been offering digital LSATs on tablets since 2012. So, so that obviously is nothing new for us. And as you can see, our app is an extreme competitive advantage in that new medium. And then obviously, coronavirus, COVID-19, and, and you know, quarantine and the social distancing uh, obviously argue uh, against being in a classroom as well. And, you know, that assumes that you even have the option of going into a classroom right now, which uh, given what we're seeing, uh, that is not the case. And so as we go through the, the app and I, and I walk through it here, I, I will highlight for you guys how this model addresses all of those issues. And so what you see here on this first screen is the full course. And what our full course is, is it's an on-demand LSAT prep course that comes with instant and lifetime access. And we have whiteboard video lessons that mimic the traditional in-class experience. And I can kind of highlight one for you here. When I used to teach in class, I used to sit in front of a whiteboard. Your mind is to and, just go ahead and um, jump into a sequencing game to get one. And work through problems. And so you see here, as you look at these videos, they're very visual. And so while we don't make you get up and move to a location to watch me in front of a whiteboard, we're still able to provide that visual learning experience, right? Not only for logic games, which we obviously see how visual they are, but logical reasoning is extremely visual with sufficient and necessary conditions and diagramming, right? And so that is where you see our kind of model of core content distribution, right? Whiteboard video lessons, again, Replicating that in-class experience, but better for a number of reasons. One, they come with a pause and rewind button, which I, which I hope you saw there while I was in the, the video for a second. A pause, it's rewind button, that uh, so you can, obviously, if you encounter something that you know you want to spend a little bit more time on, you can pause, uh, unlike an in-class course or a live online course where it's going to continue to move and you might feel overwhelmed, you might feel like you're being left behind, right? Being on demand obviously addresses those issues. In addition to that, I think technology allows us to scale great professors. And another one of the major issues with the traditional LSAT prep models is the variance of instructor quality. And so in our world, you know, obviously I'm the lead instructor. Uh, the voice you hear uh, on this video, uh, Sequencing Games, is, is Nas. You know my background. I started in the 140s. I eventually scored a 174. I've been teaching LSAT prep since 2004. Nas started with a 145, eventually scored a 175, and has also been teaching LSAT prep for a, a large number of years. And that's something that we're able to address with technology. And you can see all of our instructors if you go to our, our website in, in the instructor page, and you'll see that we only hire 99th percentile instructors, and we have an additional requirement that they're not allowed to be natural. And so every single one of our instructors, even Robbie, who scored the, the 180, right, did not start anywhere near his target score, right? Robbie started in the 150s, was eventually able to get a 180. And so 
you know, the, the beauty of technology is that we are able to get the best LSAT instructors out there and put them in front of everybody. So everybody has access to the same high quality instruction. And I wanted to compare that, right? And you look here, I have an, an LSAT prep instructor posting uh, from my hometown, actually, Irvine, California. Shout outs, Irvine. But you look here, if you look at the requirements for this job posting, it says 90th percentile LSAT score, right? So compare that. Now, again, there's nothing wrong. I do want to emphasize a 90th percentile LSAT score is a great score, right? If we look at the, the, the score band distribution here from, from 2017, 2018, we look 90th percentile uh, is going to be 164, 165. So it, so it is a great score. It is just not the type of score you would expect to see from an instructor trying to help you unlock your full potential. And what if that full potential is a 99th percentile LSAT score? How is somebody who's never been able to achieve that on their own going to help you achieve that? And so uh, obviously we are the only major uh, LSAT prep company on the market that exclusively uses 99th percentile LSAT instructors. And again, uh, I, I say major because, you know, a company with one or two instructors, I, I'm sure there's some small companies out there that, that also are, are, are able to maintain that quality. But if you look at in terms of the number uh, of instructors that we have, uh, you will not find any other company that has our standard uh, for 99th percentile instructors and, and no naturals. Um, and it's something obviously we're, we're super proud of. And so how are you able to take advantage of these 99th percentile instructors? Well, we've obviously uh, talked about the whiteboard uh, video lessons, which we, we saw in Nas's sequencing game video. But in addition to that, these in instructors are writing explanations. So I'm going to jump in here to our, our free LSAT, which is the, the June 2007 LSAT. And I'm just going to answer one of these questions and, and exit just to, to highlight something for you here in terms of uh, the, the written explanations that our instructors are also creating. So you see extremely detailed, right? Breaks it down, whether it's an argument, set of facts, whether it's valid or flawed, the question type in the course, we actually have the, the strategy summary for that type of question. You see similar summary, answer choice anticipation, the answer explanation, and then a key takeaway. And then obviously incorrect answer choice explanations as well. And so that's part of it. They also are creating video explanations for all of the logic games. And you see here, again, logic games being super visual. It's to nice to be able to see those setups, right? And obviously, so you see the setup video here for this game. And then you'll also see how we're able to go question by question after each game Please. setup and explain to you how to find the correct answer for those. And then for the reading comp, what we do is what are called line notes. And so, again, I'm just going to answer a few questions here, uh, exit out, go into review. And you'll see that while you're reviewing the reading comp, we indicate to you where the correct answer is found in the passage with the line notes. And obviously, the, the vast, vast, vast majority of reading comprehension questions are must be true questions. And so the answer choice is in the passage somewhere, and, and these line notes will help you find them. And so obviously, this is all passive engagement, right? Uh, in terms of you know the, the on-demand whiteboard video lessons, the, the explanations for the homework and, and the prep tests. But you're not limited to just passive engagement. I think that's really important to emphasize. In addition to these resources, you're going to be able to interact with our 99th percentile instructors through a number of different channels. And first, real-time message boards. And so every lesson and every question, so let's first look at the lesson. We'll go to, we'll go to sequencing. Oh, no, we already went to sequencing game. So let's dive into intro to logical reasoning, for example. And you'll see here, uh, as I go into the video, in the top right-hand corner, I see this message board thread that has 109 different messages. And, it, and I did want to emphasize here, you see these messages that, that pop up. You can actually engage with us by responding to these, right? They, they obviously guide you through the materials. But if you did have any questions, you can reach out to us via that chat as well, which is something that we will emphasize in a second in terms of content support. But you notice here, uh, we have these message boards. 
And uh, let's just jump into one here, errors in reasoning. Oh, great. And you see here, you see Sam, one of our instructors who, who scored a 174, just like yours truly. And he actually did an, an office hours on errors in reasoning the other day. But you see here, Sam coming on and responding to this question that was posted. And notice it was the same day, right? This post, the question was posted on February 14th, 2020, and Sam responded on February 14th, 2020. And, and so that is one of the ways that you can take advantage of our 99th percentile instructors in a non, in a very active, right, non-passive way. In addition to that, as I mentioned, in addition to every lesson, every question that appears also has a message board. So let's jump here to June 2000. Seven section three question five, and you see here another question posted, and Irina coming on, and Irina who who just like myself also scored a, a one seventy four and is a graduate of Harvard Law School coming on and answering this question again. You notice the question was posted on August twenty eighth, and Irina responded on August twenty ninth. And in addition to being able to post these questions yourself, you have access to all the previous discussion threads and our responses. And so you can imagine how much additional content we are creating. In addition to the message boards, you can also ask questions through chat. And so from the left menu here, you see support, and you can actually open a ticket. Let's see how to do that now. So I go to support. Uh, we want to actually close out of this and open a new conversation, for example. And so let's say, you know, one of the questions we get very common is how, how to deal with um, uh, missing premise drills. So I'm having a hard time with missing premise drills. Can you please explain? Okay, so... Another channel for you to be able to get, it would be helpful if I could spell explain correctly. And you could send in messages that way, right? And our 99th percentile instructors will respond. And notice here, some of the things that we know are common questions, you don't even need to wait. Right away, you get this automated response based on you asking a question about missing premise that directs you to an office hours session on that topic. Um, and also goes over an explanation for you. And then obviously, if you had any additional questions, you can follow up and ask again. And so that is another way to take advantage of our 99th percentile instruction, instructors. And, and lastly, which you know, I think that office hours is a, is a nice lead into, we also have live and on-demand office hours. And so here in our office hours portal, you see all of the replays of all of the office hours sessions we have hosted so far. And as you can see, there are a ton, right? And a lot of them are, are unlocked for free, so you can take advantage of them. All of my Instagram Q&As are, are unlocked for free, so, so everything up here, uh, Missing Premise is the one that we just talked about, that's unlocked for free. Even my uh, November 2019 LSAT, uh, Office Hours Bonanza kickoff, also unlocked. And then you'll see down here some of the sessions that we've recently done, uh, including the two from, from yesterday. Brandon's uh, LSAT Basics is unlocked. Uh, Yelena's Law School Applications is unlocked. And then even my COVID-19 uh, LSAT updates is also unlocked. And so not only can you take advantage of these sessions on demand, but you can join them live and ask any questions that you have. And you know, something to, to highlight in terms of the on-demand, obviously we realize that this is a ton of content. And if you're looking for specific help, you know, I think what's helpful is being able to filter this content. And so that's what happens over here with the filter, where you can focus in on certain things that are giving you trouble and just see the office hours that relate to that. So for example, if I wanted some help with errors and reasoning, right, I'll apply that filter. And you notice uh, Brandon's comes up. Obviously, it looks like I'm missing the tag for, for Sam's because I just mentioned Sam did one. Uh, so I, I'll get that fixed. Yeah, see, Sam's there and his reasoning right there. Paywall. And so that's the idea of how you can take advantage of those 99 percentiles in, in a very active way. And 
you know, again, just to, to again emphasize something for you guys, for those of you who aren't our, our paid students, this is our current schedule right now for office hours. Given what we are seeing with the quarantine, we've decided to host an office hour session every day to inspire you to make the most of this time. You know, as we've said repeatedly, we understand that this is a tremendous uncertainty. Uh, it, it looks like that April LSAT will most likely be canceled as well. But this is good news because time is an incredible ally when it comes to LSAT prep, something we're going to talk about right now as we go into a little bit more detail with the full course. But to kind of inspire you guys to do that, we have been doing our quarantine office hours. And you notice uh, we had hosted 13 sessions in March. And then once it was announced that this will be extended all through April, we have announced our schedule for April. And so today at two o'clock, well, so we, we changed some of these, so it used to be noon, but today at, at two o'clock, Ravi will be hosting uh, an office hour session on guru games, the idea of games where we can uh, come up with all the possibilities. And then tomorrow you'll see Yelena's back uh, with another session on errors and reasoning. And so while LSAT Max is a remote learning process, something we emphasize repeatedly is you are not alone. Uh, we are here to help you as you navigate your LSAT prep, uh, as you navigate this journey uh, to law school. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions uh, or if we can help in any way. And you actually see that at the bottom here. I do want to emphasize uh, in the free trial, you see free consult uh, over here uh, on the left side of the screen. You can actually call in and speak to one of our LSAT advisors or on the right side, you can chat with us. And so definitely something uh, to be aware of uh, and take advantage of <clears throat> if you have any questions. All right, and I do see the Q&A is coming in, guys, so, so I do appreciate that. I promise you I will get to those as soon as I finish just going through this overview. So feel free to keep dropping them in there. We are almost done here. So uh, moving on. So now that we've talked a little bit about a high level about how we address some of those issues with our course, let's talk about the course, right, which is your first step in your journey. And you see here uh, on this full course screen, every question type, every concept, as an icon and in that icon you're going to find a detailed video lesson and a corresponding homework assignment of real LSAT questions and so you see here uh, you have all these icons you see the economist subscription a lot of students wonder about that so in our premium program we include a 12-week digital subscription to the economist magazine I think it's actually print and digital now to the economist magazine you don't need us to take advantage of that. It's a, it's a $12 subscription, but I found that to be incredibly useful during my prep in terms of helping me improve my reading comprehension score. So that is part of, uh, of our premium program. And then you see six diagnostics that we assign through the course calendar. So we do do some time practice as well. But I think it's really important, and this is you know, one of the reasons we can, we can transition to another thing that I think distinguishes us from everybody else is we're the only company to offer instant and lifetime access. And a lot of students wonder, why do we do that? You know, it's not because we think you should prepare for the LSAT the rest of your life. But the reason we think instant and lifetime access is useful is you know, it's actually something that I experienced firsthand in my own LSAT prep, where you know, I signed up for a $1,500 10-week LSAT prep course. And by the time that course had finished, I was nowhere near my target score. I had gone from the, you know, the 140s to the high 150s. I think I had hit 160 once, but nowhere near my 170 target, which was obviously very discouraging to me. But what I decided to do was postpone my exam, which was a great decision from, you know, if you look at it, it was that decision that that additional time where I studied on my own that really allowed me to break through. You know, the problem with it for me was that I lost access to my LSAT. So I was left on my own during what I would argue is the most important part of the process. Because once you have the foundation in place, being able to execute that under the time pressure and achieve your target score is really challenging. And it requires a lot of you know, self-assessment, a lot of review, and obviously not having a course during that period of time was extremely challenging. For me. So uh, let's look at our recommended course calendar here. This is for the August LSAT. Again, I, I just pulled up one that, that hasn't started. The structure of our calendar is the same for all of the, the upcoming LSATs. And what you see here is the first part of the program 
is that full course screen where we assign those icons and assignments and you go through it just like you would a traditional course. But you notice while our prep for the August LSAT starts on April 21st, the course ends over here on June 27th or June 28th when we review DIAC 6. And the rest of that calendar is all practice and review, practice and review, practice and review. We actually have an office hour session where we, we go in, in depth about what practice and review means. Actually, Brandon hosted that. But the idea there is it's, you know, time practice, taking simulated LSATs and obviously trying to get to a point where you can consistently achieve your target score on simulated LSATs. And so that's the idea of why we offer instant and lifetime access, because the course is only the first step. Going through this, watching these videos, doing the homework assignments, right, is obviously going to instill a foundation. But again, it's all relative to your target score too, right? If you, you have a lower target score, the journey is going to take less time than if you have a higher target score. And obviously it depends on where you start and where you want to go. What we always say is that spread, right? So for me, from the 140s to 170, a large spread, you know, I could expect that to take me some time. And my journey actually took me about seven months. And so that's the first part of the process. And then obviously you turn your attention to the time practice, which is the prep test. But I did want to emphasize that even when you go through our homework assignments in the course and see here, you'll see our homework assignment for sequencing games. It has the same layout as the digital LSAT. Also, when you take practice exams, and you can obviously see that if you launch the free practice LSAT, this is the same exact layout as the digital LSAT. And obviously, by having this on a tablet, you can mimic that tablet experience as well. The touch technology, the timer in the top right-hand corner, the highlighting, the underlining, changing the font size, changing the spacing, changing the brightness. You see the highlighter. You see the, the questions at the bottom, being able to jump around very quickly, the ability to flag questions, to return, to check those later. You notice the little flags being popped up at the bottom there. And so the beauty of the LSAT Max program is that as you progress with your course and you're doing homework assignments, even your homework assignments mimic the digital LSAT experience, which is, again, something that when the LSAT wasn't digital, we used to actually mail out hard copy materials we still mail out the hard copies of the course, right? The lesson notes, the homework assignments, but we no longer mail the prep tests because we want you to mimic the digital LSAT experience, right? And in North America now, every LSAT is the digital LSAT. And so it's really important that you do that. And then obviously, in addition to the, the full course, you have the prep tests, where here you'll see every LSAT ever released, again, in the exact same format, as the digital LSAT, right? And so that is something that I think I want to emphasize for you guys. And, and just so you guys understand the difference, so, and so sometimes we get this question a lot, we might as well jump to it now. When you look at the different packages that we offer in terms of our course, you see here, you know, a lot of students say, what's the difference between pro and premium, right? And really the course is the same in all of these packages. It's the same lessons, same homework assignments, same diagnostic exams, same support, right? Same access to the message boards, same access to chat, same access to office hours. The difference is the number of practice LSATs that come with the program, right? And so with pro, you get 20 exams. With premium, you get every exam ever released, which at this point is 90 exams, right? So when you look back over here, right? It would literally unlock all 89, and then obviously with the, the, the June 2007 LSAT, right, that would make the 90 exams. And then just jumping back one more time, in terms of intensive, intensive is just premium, and it adds three hours of private tutoring. And, and again, uh, just to emphasize, our private tutoring is also done remotely using Zoom just like this. And, and obviously, we do have the ability to share our screens and, and work through things visually. If you've joined any of the, the, the office hours or seen any of the office hours, for example, missing premise drills is a great example uh, because I do work through that very visually in that office hour session. And that's how uh, our 
private tutoring actually works for, for LSAT-MAX. And again, all 99th percentile instructors stay at home and, and quarantine uh, approved because uh, we're done through video conference. And so I, I did want to emphasize though too, just like we saw with the homeworks uh, as you go through the course, um, let me just answer a couple of questions here and then we can jump out and I'll show you. The, these questions uh, also have a detailed written explanations, right? So you see here, again, breaking down whether it's an argument or, or set of facts, whether it's valid or flawed, the type of question, a similar summary, answer anticipation, answer explanation, a key takeaway. So you see that, um, and, and obviously the incorrect answer choices uh, explained as well. Uh, all right, and so that's the idea now, uh, obviously, as you, you're progressing through the course, and, and something to emphasize, especially as we talk about private tutoring, is another really amazing feature that we have is, is what we call analytics. And if you look over here, obviously I haven't done much, but as you progress with the LSAT Max program, whether that's doing the homework assignments, taking diagnostic exams, doing prep tests, we're going to track your progress. And we're going to highlight for you how you're doing on all the different types of questions you can encounter. And the reason that this information is going to be invaluable to you is as you progress, this personalized data is going to allow you to hone in on your weaknesses. First, by identifying for you that you're struggling with something. So for example, here I'm doing terrible on strengthening questions, even though it's only one out of two. But the point being that I have a couple of options here. I can drill down on strength in questions even more by launching what we call adaptive learning, right? And here, if I launch this, this will only provide me with strength in questions, right? Which is a great way to focus your attention on areas that are giving you trouble. In addition, you can, you know, obviously join live office hour sessions if you've identified any pain point, right? We obviously do them by topic. You can jump into one of those sessions by topic, ask any questions you have. Or, you know, you can obviously use the, the on-demand replays, right? So, for example, I've identified that I'm, I'm struggling with strength in questions, right? Coming over here, using my filter, you know, saying, okay, let's take a look at, you know, what, what we can see here for strength in questions uh, and taking advantage of those on-demand office hours. And, and lastly, obviously, as we talked about, would be supplementing your course with private tutor. And here you see our private tutoring options, you know, hourly. We also have it package based where you can save some money if you buy a package uh, of 10, 20, or 30 hours. Again, all done remotely using Zoom video conference, just like you see in these uh, webinars in our, in our office hours. Um, and you can actually schedule it directly uh, in the app here as well. If you look at the bottom right hand, corner of the app, you see tutoring, uh, and I apparently have a lot of hours, but the idea you can schedule it directly in the product and as well purchase if you don't have hours uh, associated with your account. And so that is the idea uh, of the LSAT Max program there. And I just wanna make sure that I didn't forget anything that I wanted to highlight for you guys before we turn, so we talked about that. Oh, I should talk about, you know, we do offer digital LSATs a la carte. Um, so you can actually purchase just prep tests if you want. If you look, you can purchase them one at a time, like literally like uh, one prep test. Sorry. Uh, like going here. You see all the, the prep tests here uh, that you can purchase a la carte. Or you have the bundles, uh, which is also what I was showing here uh, on our website. But again, remember, uh, that these uh, our courses come with uh, the, the LSATs pr premium gives you access to every LSAT ever released. And so that's a pretty good overview, I think, of our, our program and, and what really distinguishes us from our competitors. And, and I hope you realize that a lot of this stuff is brand new, right? We really pride ourselves on listening to our students. And so, for example, office hours is a result of students saying, you know, we would love to have some live sessions where we could ask questions. So obviously, um, as you can see, uh, we took that request very seriously by not only hosting office hours very frequently, uh, but then creating this office hours portal, which al allows us to have everything uh, available for you guys on demand. And again, 
But just to give you a sense, you know, you look at some of our competitors and their live online course gives you access to eight four hour sessions, right? So 32 hours of, of LSAT content. Um, where if you look at what we're doing here with our uh, Office Hours Bonanza, 30 sessions uh, in April, 13 in March, just these, you know, past, you know, six weeks, we're going to be adding 43 hours of brand new uh, content. You know, obviously the written explanations, you know, the message boards are great, but it's really nice to be able to see the explanations without having to go on the message boards, right? And so bringing these detailed written explanations for logical reasoning forward facing uh, was again a result of, you know, feedback from our, from our students. And so uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to us if there's anything you would like to see. Some other really exciting updates that are coming uh, just to give you guys a, a heads up. So, you know, right now we, we classify the games and, and reading comp based on the type of passage, type of game. We're going to take analytics a step further where we're going to also base it on the type of question, for example, rule substitution questions, uh, being able to see how you're doing on those, uh, seeing how you're doing on must be true versus cannot be true, seeing how you're doing on global questions versus local questions. I think that that data will be very helpful and those updates are coming. And so I think that's a good place now to, to maybe uh, transition a bit to some of the questions that we've received. And so let's dive in here. So the first one is actually from, from Merrick here. Are there any discounts for military members? Absolutely. And so something to highlight for you guys here is we have a military scholarship. And uh, our scholarship makes uh, all of our courses half price. Or, or what I should say there is it makes pro and premium half price. So Premium would be $450, a pro would be $400, intensive would be $750 because it just adds the three hours to the discounted price of premium. But yes, we do have a military uh, scholarship that we are extremely proud of. All you need to do uh, for that is send in anything formal that we can use to verify your service, both active and former uh, qualified. Uh, so please take advantage of that scholarship. And again, thank you for your service. It is the least we could do. Something else we definitely want to emphasize uh, as well, particularly as we, we talk about this question, LSAT Max versus the Khan Academy. So the question here also from, from Merrick, LSAT Max versus Khan Academy free prep, why should I use LSAT Max? So, you know, a couple of things, you know, it's great to see that, uh, you know, LSAC is, is trying to make things more accessible. And obviously Khan Academy is part of that process by providing some free prep for every student. I think the, the issue that I have with Khan Academy is Khan Academy does everything. They are not focused on the LSAT. We do two things here, LSAT prep and bar exam prep. And so we are laser focused. And so from that perspective, I think the quality of our instruction cannot be compared, whether that's Khan Academy or anybody else, to be, to be quite frank. And one thing to be aware of is in addition to our military scholarship, we also have our LSAT Max fee waiver scholarship, another thing that we are extremely proud of. And what this means is that if you qualify for LSAT's fee waiver scholarship, our premium package, which is our $999 package right here in the middle, is completely free of charge. And so obviously, if you are an LSAC fee waiver recipient, please send in your your PDF of your fee waiver, we can get your access unlocked, and you can take advantage of all of our resources just as though you paid that $1,000. And I see Claire dropped that link into the chat for everybody. So yes, there it is uh, that you can go and take advantage of that. All right, so let's keep going through some of these questions. Um, so anonymous attendee is asking, how do you take a diagnostic? Do you study at all before you take your diagnostic to get used to the time restraint? So that's an interesting question. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about, so a couple of things. So first, if you're, if you're taking a diagnostic, like in terms of getting started, there's no need for you to prepare, right? Like my 148 that, that I always talk about, I walked in uh, and took a blind, cold LSAT. I always joke and say that that 148 was probably uh, extremely inflated because I was blindly guessing, and I'm sure I guessed right a few times, right? Um, but I didn't do any, any prep for that. Um, and I think, you know, there's no need to do that. I think the, the purpose of uh, taking a practice exam before you start with your LSAT prep is really just to get a sense of the beast, right? What, what is this exam that you're about to start to prepare for? What does it look like? What does it test? 
and also on the off chance that you, you're a natural, which is obviously super rare, but if you are one of those uh, fortunate souls, why on earth do you need to think about LSAT prep, right? Now, in terms of, you know, when you're taking, you know, the diagnostics in the course, we highly recommend taking them under the time pressure, right? And, and, and we do the five section, five section LSATs, right? You know, the four score sections are, are obviously the ones that are released, but you can make any four section LSAT, a five section LSAT, right? By just doing an additional section. And so I think it's really important that you, 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 you take your simulated exams under time pressure. But again, I think something else to, to be aware of is when you're first getting started with your LSAT prep, you shouldn't be thinking about timing, right? And we talk about that in our free timing lesson here uh, about how actually what's going to end up happening for you as you get started is your timing's actually going to get worse because now you are being introduced to new strategies, new techniques, trying to apply them for the first time. It's natural to not be moving at optimal speed. But the hope is obviously as you continue to practice and you continue to increase your comfort, your timing will naturally catch up. So I hope that was helpful. All right, so here we have a question from Turner. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, will there be an increase in applications for the school year starting fall 2021, potentially a decrease for fall 2020 admission? So, you know, obviously this is a great question. A fluid situation where we don't really know how it's going to unfold. You know, generally speaking, anytime there's a recession, applications to graduate school, including law school, increase, right? You know, when, when it's harder to find jobs, people look for alternatives, and one of those alternatives is graduate school. So if we continue to head this way with the economy, I would assume you will see an uptick in people thinking about law school in the fall. Now, in terms of what's happening with the 2020 uh, or the class starting in, in fall 2020, you know, it's hard to say. You, know, you can definitely see students deferring due to concerns about coronavirus being present still this fall. And so it's hard, it's really hard to say. I think, you know, these things are really out of your control. If you're interested in attending law school and applying in the fall, the most important thing is your LSAT score. That's the one thing that is within your control. And so my suggestion would be to just continue to put time to your prep. And as these things unfold, we'll figure out how to navigate them. As you've noticed, we are very active in trying to help you guys navigate this really extraordinary situation. But remember, you know, LSAC has a lot of exam dates now. You know, it used to be four times a year. Now it's 10 times a year. Even if April's canceled, they still have June, July, August, right? You're starting to see law schools postpone application deadlines. So keeping the window open for this cycle. So, I, you know, again, I think, you know, a lot of this stuff is going to continue to unfold uh, over the next few weeks. But given the fact that we are on lockdown now uh, through the end of April, I think that pretty much... Uh, guarantees that the April LSAT will also be canceled, uh, but LSAC will be making a final determination uh, on that by April 10th, um, and we will obviously keep you guys posted. And again, one of the reasons it's really important, guys, that you keep your exam date up to date in, in LSAT Max is we do send out really valuable information via email, via in-app messages, via push, via text. Uh, I can't tell you how many times we've sent out uh, reminders for the registration deadline for exams via text message and students respond with, thank God you texted me. Uh, I hadn't re registered and I just registered in the nick of time. Uh, so definitely make sure that you have your, the communication channels on from us. Uh, we will continue to keep you guys updated and obviously keep you guys updated on all the exciting uh, content that we are creating. I think, you know, something else we should definitely mention in terms of those of you who are getting started with the process is our guide the road to 180 which is free on kindle unlimited as you see here if you don't have kindle unlimited i want to say it's three dollars and 99 cents and the, the paperback is is also available if you're not a fan of trees but this is a great guide in terms of just how to start thinking about your your lsat prep it's really talks about the, the top 10 most frequently asked questions and then the top 10 questions you should be asking as you think about lsat prep and law school and we actually have a couple more uh, titles in, in production. So stay tuned. Uh, again, another reason why you, you definitely want to make sure that you, you are staying connected with us uh, so we can inform you. Uh, and then, you know, as we mentioned earlier, uh, our, our latest uh, uh, content uh, creation is the legal level uh, co-hosted uh, by Brandon and, and Yelena. 
Uh, so definitely check it out if you haven't already. I thought their first episode was, was really great and I'm looking forward myself uh, to the next one. So I hope you guys find that useful. All right, so um, keep them coming, guys. I, I hope you guys uh, are finding this stuff useful. I will continue to answer them. Uh, here's one from Grace. Hi, Marin. I'm wondering, do you recommend other materials along with LSMX online study schedule? Well, so our course is designed to be comprehensive. And so you don't need anything else. And so if you've purchased LSMX Premium, you know, you have access to not only the full course, you have access to, to all the prep test materials. I wouldn't recommend buying anything else. If you really feel like you're struggling, I think what you would want to consider in that situation is supplementing your course with some private tutor, right? I think that is the one thing that you might find beneficial. Again, you know, we've tried to design the course as a standalone, you know, so you don't feel like you need it. But, you know, we do understand that, you know, the exam is really challenging and sometimes you do need a little extra one-on-one -on -one attention to get over hurdles. And so if anything is giving you trouble, that would be my suggestion in terms of supplementing your course. I, I would recommend doing it with the private tutoring or just taking advantage of all the, the office hours as well. All right, so anonymous attendee. I am one of LSMX Premium uh, students, and I'm almost halfway through the course. I've been following the calendar. My baseline was 135, but I'm not really doing too well with the homework assignments. I'm shooting for the 90th percentile score, so considering my situation, would you recommend August or October LSAT? So, <clears throat> a couple of things. If you are thinking about applying in the fall, you shouldn't put any uh, unneeded pressure on yourself in terms of forcing yourself to take July, for example. I think August is more than sufficient, even October, right? Obviously, the idea that we're, we're talking about here is this idea of rolling admissions, where all else being equal, if you can apply earlier in the application cycle, it's better, right? Applications are considered on a first-in basis. Now, that being said, though, we always recommend picking the exam that's going to give you the higher LSAT score, right? And so... If postponing your exam to August or October is going to give you the ability to break 99th percentile more than July, absolutely, I would recommend doing that. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind, though. This should not be a surprise to you in terms of whether it's feasible or it's not feasible, right? And, and I get that, you know, you're starting, you know, in the 130s, so obviously getting to the 170s is going to be a journey, and, you know, and I totally understand you know, not doing really well with the homework assignments. If you can believe it, that's how I was when I first went through my LSAT prep. It's natural, right? This is a extremely challenging exam. It's unique from the perspective of it's not a subject-based exam. It's testing the way of thinking, right? I, I think struggling with it is completely natural. I think the hope is that as you go through the course materials and you do the homework assignments and you, you, you review the homework assignments, whether that's reading the, the logical reasoning explanations or watching the logic game videos, you start to get more comfortable as you start to take diagnostic exams in the course, you start to see your score improve, right? But again, remember, you know, just like myself, I do want to emphasize, the majority of my improvements uh, came from the second part of the process. So if you look during my course, which was about 10 weeks, I improved about 10 points. It was the second part of the process, this practice and review phase, and again, remember, I studied for seven months. And so my course was 10 weeks. The rest of it was this practice and review phase where obviously I saw the majority of my improvement, right? So don't get discouraged. And obviously, if you're taking practice LSATs under time pressure once a week, you're going to know exactly where you are. And you know, how, a lot of students say, how did you know you were ready to take the exam? You know how I knew I was ready? I was able to consistently achieve 170 on my simulated practice LSATs. That told me I'm ready. And so again, you know, as we talk about this, and I think you know, something that I do want to emphasize, because uh, we, we did just do an office hour session on this, um, which you'll see here, Brandon, um, timed practice and review, over here from March 20th, or no, March 24th. How you approach review is really important, right? It's really important that you're able to do self-assessment. You know, obviously, our app is going to provide you with the analytics. If you're using it online, the online version provides you with the analytics, right? You know, again, just something that we emphasize, if you can get your hands on a tablet, whether it's an iPad or an Android tablet, you, know, you don't need to buy one. Even if you can borrow one, you can download our app, log into your account, and use the digital LSAT simulator because, obviously, a tablet is slightly different from the online version. 
Um, you don't need an internet access, an internet connection to use our app, which eliminates the, the issue of your internet going out in the middle of your practice exam. And obviously the, the, the tablet does have the touch technology. Um, using the mouse you know, is not the same, but pretty close. But I do think it's really important to try to replicate those as closely as possible. But you know, something to think about is like how, coming up with a roadmap of how you're gonna achieve your target score, right? And so for me, you know, I had a target score of 170 or higher, which means you know, maximum I can miss 10 questions. And so I had to think about how was I going to disperse those 10 incorrect questions in the four sections. And so for me, I came up with perfect on logic games, two to three per logical reasoning, three to four on reading comp. And so as I was progressing with my LSAT prep, taking these uh, simulated exams, I noticed that I was missing five to six on logical reasoning per section. I was missing eight to nine on reading comp per section, right? While I was doing well on games, those other two sections were an Achilles heel. And focusing my attention on those, right? Really trying to understand what was preventing me from getting more accurate on logical reasoning? Was it a question type? Was it a concept, right? And, and you know, I actually have a, a YouTube video um, that I'm gonna look up real quick and just drop it in the, the chat where I talk about my epiphany uh, on logical reasoning. This was really my, you know, when I was stuck in the mid 160s, making this minor adjustment in how I approach, oh, sorry, uh, this is the panelists, let's send it to everybody. There we go. Just making this minor adjustment in how I approached logical reasoning was a game changer for me, right? And, and that's really what we talk about, about the self-assessment and review and the idea of blind review and you know, looking at the questions without time pressure before you know whether you got it right or wrong. Um, these are really important uh, things to do in your, in your prep process that will make a world of difference. All right, let's keep going. So Thomas Jones. How does the LSAC waiver work for applying for free membership? Super simple. So if you have an LSAC fee waiver, you can just email us. So a couple of options here. Uh, from the app, you can obviously open a, a support chat here. And, and just to emphasize that, you know, you, you do have the ability to attach things to the conversation. Just attach your, your fee waiver PDF. The moment that that, that, that is received, your fee waiver scholarship will be conditionally approved. And then what we do is we share with LSAC for formal approval. Uh, your course is unlocked during the conditional approval period, but you won't be able to add the hard copy materials uh, until your course is formally, uh, your scholarship is formally approved by LSAC. So just send that in to us. All right, so here's a great question from Brendan Thomas. I received my LSMX scholarship. Well, uh, of course, Brendan, our pleasure. Uh, now, if you're taking the LSAT in July or August, how do you suggest I set a study schedule? Great question, Brendan. All right, so let's take a look. Let's go back to our, our um, calendar here for, for August. And so, like, listen, let's assume you were going to take the August exam. I would not wait to start, right? Do not wait until April 21st to start, right? If you're taking the October LSAT and you sign up for LSAT Max, do not wait till our recommended course calendar starts to get started with your prep, right? What you wanna do is um, use the course calendar as an order of assignments. So just start going through these materials in the order that we set forth. It's the same order that you find on the full course screen. If you progress through these icons from top to bottom, left to right, it's the same order that's set forth in the course calendar. Same idea with LSMX Online. If you go from top to bottom, it's the same order. So what you wanna do first is complete the course materials. Obviously, the sooner you're able to do that, again, that doesn't mean rush through it, right? We wanna make sure that we process it, we understand it, right? But the sooner you're able to finish the course, the sooner you're able to turn your attention to the second part of the process, which is the practice and review. And the more time you have between the time you finish the course, right, and you have the foundation in place and your target exam date, the better you're going to be in terms of having that time to hone under time pressure until you're able to consistently achieve your target score. So that's the way I would approach it. Do not look at the calendar as assignments on specific dates. The beauty of instant and lifetime access is you have access to everything the moment you enroll. Just progress through those materials in the order that we set forth. 
Same idea, if something takes you longer, right? If you encounter something that's giving you trouble, and this is something that you know, we can emphasize in terms of when I used to teach in class, that used to drive me crazy. You know, generally it's either Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, right? Now, obviously within a class session, right, I had to get through this you know, strengthen lesson in four hours. And so because I had to get through that lesson in four hours, there's a limited amount of time for Q&A anyway. I had to progress at a certain pace, which by definition meant some students felt held back, other students felt left behind. But then let's think about the next course or the next class. So I introduced this really challenging concept on Tuesday. No matter what, my students would have to come back on Thursday and learn something new. And you would see that snowball effect where they would feel overwhelmed. They're not processing anything. Then you combine that with limited access, right? And you could see why the traditional model tends to not be successful for the vast majority of students, right? Whereas in LSAT Max world, let's imagine you encounter strength in questions. It's challenging. It's challenging for everybody. Instead of only giving yourself a day, you give yourself two days, three days, right? Our model is designed for that because that's going to allow you to progress through the materials at a pace that makes sense for you in a way that you understand and that will hopefully allow you to maximize your score. Anonymous attendee, great question. How many people are typically on the live office hours? Is it hard to get questions answered? No, actually, it's been, uh, we've been hosting so many of them that, you know, we're generally seeing between anywhere from 20 to 40 students in a live session. But again, the number of people speaking is even fewer, right? Most people join and just uh, sit there silently. Just like in class, right? I always use a joke, this idea that, you know, students, you know, gravitate towards in class before coronavirus because they think, oh, I'm going to be able to ask all these questions. The reality is in the classroom, most students are petrified to raise their hand, right? Particularly if nobody else is raising their hand. And so what personalized attention meant when I used to teach in class was a line of students before class and a line of students after class which is not an efficient use of, of your time. So, yeah, the, the office hours have been great. You, know, you definitely check them out if you haven't because they, they are super helpful and uh, they're very manageable in terms of the number of, of people. And we'll, we're going to keep it that way, obviously, as we continue to grow, which we owe, we owe all of our growth and success to our students, right? I mean, you guys believed in our vision. We had this crazy idea way back when that now all of a sudden – seems pretty sane but for, for, for our students who believed in us before you know the digital LSAT before coronavirus you know I joke and say you know this moment is going to do more for remote learning and online education than anything before it and I actually think what we're witnessing right now is going to be the death of traditional in-class LSAT prep courses you will never see that model return because what's happening right now is students are being forced to experience remote on-demand courses and when you experience how much superior that model is, you're never going to go back, right? I mean, in-class LSAT prep courses are going to be the new blockbuster video. And so, you know, for those of you who have been using LSAT Max, kudos to you guys for, for being early adopters. Uh, for those of you who are uh, considering us for the first time because of the things that have happened, you know, we're, we're thrilled to have you here, uh, even if it's because, you know, uh, of this, you know, uh, situation that, our hearts and, and prayers go out to everyone affected by it. It's the last thing we want to see in, in terms of why students are coming to, to check us out. But you know, the reality is this is what we're facing and, and our model is designed uh, for remote. And so you know, the beauty of being an LSMX student right now is none of this disruption is going to affect your ability to access your materials, to access your instructors, to work to achieve your goal, and as we said in that email, imagine you walk out of your house when the, the self-quarantine ends with your target score in hand. That's nothing to panic about, something to be super excited about. And so uh, I hope that, you know, you're finding all the stuff that we're providing useful uh, and you decide to take advantage of it. All right, so let's keep going here. McKenna, is LSMX Pro good enough if you're aiming for 160, 165, if you already brought some practice books? So again, absolutely. I think, you know, again, it's a, it's a hard question to ask, uh, answer in a vacuum. But remember, if you start with LSAT Max Pro and you get those 20 exams, and I, and I saw some questions about what those 20 exams are, it's the six course diagnostics and the 13 most recently released LSATs, or, or 14 most recently released LSATs, right? And so you, you do get the newer ones. Uh, and in terms of the course, right, we pull questions from the old LSATs for the course homework assignments uh, so that we keep the new ones fresh for the time practice portion. 
But something to keep in mind is if you start with pro and you run out of materials, you can always upgrade to premium by just paying the difference. And so, again, because the course is identical, because the support is identical, and the only difference is the number of practice exams, pro is a great place to start. Now, you know, we do recommend premium if you're shooting for the higher scores. And the only reason we do that, though, is generally speaking, the farther you currently are from your target score, the longer that process will take. And part of that process is more practice exam. But you definitely can see improvement and achieve your target score with pro. And so definitely start there. If you're not sure, you can always upgrade by paying the difference. Merrick, I, I see your m military discount question, uh, which we did answer. So, so we do offer the military discount. I, I will pull that up one more time here. But you, now we're, we're seeing another question here about why do we recommend this course above all others? And so again, I think as you look at you know, what se separates us from our competitors is quality of instruction, the best technology, right? You notice our app is five-star rated, heading towards 2,000 reviews. It's the number one rated, most downloaded app in, in the app store. You, you look at our quality of instructors, you look at the level of support and content creation, you cannot find anything on the market that is currently providing what we are providing to our students and at the costs that we charge. One-time fees, instant and lifetime access, interior done preparing. Another thing I do want to emphasize is, you know, we, we do also offer no interest payment plans. So for, for students out there who don't qualify for the scholarships, who are experiencing financial difficulties, you can break up your purchase using a, our financing partner or firm three, six, or 12 months with no interest. So you see here, you know, LSAT Max premium over 12 months, no interest comes out to only $83 a month. And so we hope that that's budget friendly enough for, for all students. But again, so, you know, I think as, as you go back to, you know, what, what separates us, you know, you know, we have uh, unparalleled instructor quality, you know, uh, we have instant and lifetime access. Uh, we allow you to progress at your own pace so you don't feel held back or left behind. You know, the, the, the app and the data that we provide in terms of analytics allows you to have an extremely personalized LSAT prep experience. Uh, obviously, we talked about the lifetime access, and then you, you know, in terms of our price point, we, we are the most affordable. You know, the, you'll find other courses that might be uh, less expensive, but when you combine that with the amount of access, you'll quickly realize that they're not actually uh, more affordable uh, than LSAT Max. All right, so continuing to go here, uh, Sienna says, do you recommend six months to one year to prepare? Is one of the reasons why those other preps don't work is because they do not allow enough time to prepare prior to the exam. Well, yeah, I, I think, you know, again, this idea that you should prepare for 10 to 12 weeks for the most important factor in law school admissions is an idea that was created by the companies that recharge you when you're not ready, right? Think about it. You spend four years on your, on your undergraduate GPA, which is maybe 20% of your law school application, but then you're going to spend eight weeks on your LSAT prep. Uh, it makes no sense. But in terms of the amount of time, you know, I don't want to discourage people to say, hey, you're going to have to prepare for six months, a year to, to achieve your target score, right? It, it really depends on where you are and where you want to go, right? Uh, we always get the question, what's a good target, what's a good LSAT score? And I always say, well, you know, it's a, it's a great question. Uh, where do you want to go to law school? Right? You look at for me, like, I wanted to go to Harvard Law School. That was it. And so if I couldn't break 170, that door would never be open for me. Or, you know, it, it definitely could be open, but it's much, much more challenging without that. And so I had to break 170. And starting where I started, right, that, that journey was difficult. Now, if I would have been content with a 160, that probably would have taken me about three, four months, right? So, so I do want to emphasize that, you know, the, the amount of time LSAT prep takes is really dependent on where you start and where you want to go. And again, generally speaking, the larger that spread, the longer it will take. Uh, but we've seen students increase 10 points in a month, right? And be totally happy with their score and stop preparing, right? And so, yeah, I don't want to make you feel like, oh, I have to prepare for a year. It's really about where you start and where you want to go. All right, another question here about the calendar. Is the rationale behind the order of the calendar you showed us? Or what is the rationale? Okay, great. Yeah. So the idea is very simple. The, the concepts build off of each other. And so we just want you to go in this order 
Because if you start jumping around, certain things won't make sense. And I can give you some examples. So you see here on April 28th in this calendar, we introduce sufficient and necessary conditions, right? If you jump forward on May 14th here, you see we talk about strength in questions. And then strengthen with necessary on the 15th, strengthen with sufficient on the 16th. And so, as you can imagine, strengthen with necessary, strengthen with sufficient will not make any sense to you until you've seen sufficient and necessary. Same idea with group games, right? Group games deal heavily with sufficient and necessary conditions. If you haven't seen sufficient and necessary conditions, group games, are going to be super confusing. You, know, you see a ton of not both in either or in group games, right? In out group games, right? And so that's the rationale behind the order. The concepts build off of each other. So we recommend going in that order just so you don't get confused. Now, something else to emphasize, particularly as we talk about how long to prepare for the LSAT, you do not need to go zero to 100. And I think what I would like to do is just pull up something here. For example, in logical reasoning. And it's something else that I think we should talk about. Every one of our video lessons comes with a very nice table of contents. So let's say that, you know, as you progress with the course, you identify something that's giving you trouble from your analytics and you want to go rewatch a portion of a video lesson. You don't need to watch the whole thing. You can jump to a specific part using the table of contents. So here, what I want to talk to you guys about right now is the frequency of certain question types on logical reasoning. So I'm going to jump to frequency of question types. Look how nice that is. Let me fast forward just a second here. Okay, great. So this is what I wanted to emphasize. And the reason I want to emphasize this is, listen, if your target score is in the 150s, right, there's certain things that appear in logical reasoning, for example, parallel reasoning, flawed parallel reasoning, which are very, very challenging but are so rare that it's not gonna matter in terms of your ability to achieve the 150. Now, obviously, if you wanna get a 170, it's gonna matter. So something else to think about as you come up with your study schedule, again, this is one of the reasons we talk about reaching out to our advisors, scheduling consults, right? Because everybody's situation is unique. And I think the more information we have about your specific scenario, your situation, your goals, the better we're able to guide you. But for example, when I talk to students who say, I want to break 150, one of the things I tell them to do is focus their attention on the most common question types. Strengthen, methods and errors in reasoning, must be true, weaken, right? You start to see that that is the bulk of the question types you're encountering in logical reasoning. And so by mastering those first, you're going to see your score move quickly. And then, once you feel comfortable with those, then we can start seeing how we can do with some of the rarer question types. Another thing we talk about, we've talked about it repeatedly, are these new rule substitution questions on uh, logic games, right? They're time trapped questions and super challenging. That is not something you should waste your time with if your target score is in the 150s or 160s, right? Yeah, even in the 170s, I would probably jump in and come back to it at the end just because I don't want to risk it. And you're starting to see them give you that rule substitution at the end of the first game or the end of the second game as opposed to the end of the last game. And they're doing that intentionally, right? So be aware of those things. And again, remember, all that matters is the number of correct answer choices you are able to attain. You know, and, and, and all that matters from that perspective is being able to attain enough correct answer choices to achieve your, your target score. Uh, so please keep that in mind as you prepare and so that one's done. Let's keep going. Do you provide materials for the practice and review? Absolutely. And so again, as I mentioned, right, as you see uh, with uh, uh, you know, the most recent exam that, that just came out, you, you have the same type of uh, detailed written explanations, right? Uh, obviously, for the, the logic games, we do have the videos. We are constantly adding more and more uh, content. Uh, and then obviously, as you saw, in our office hour schedule, uh, we do actually go over specific uh, exams as well. And so, yes. But again, I think, you know, the, the best way to take advantage of the practice and review, right, is the blind review. We talk about that in the, the practice and review office hours. 
And the idea of you know taking them under time pressure, taking them again without time pressure, really focusing on you know why you're picking something different. If you if you are right, what are you seeing differently? I think that's a really important process in, in your ability to improve. So absolutely, we do provide support and materials during that practice and review uh, portion. Which again, the materials are really the, all of these practice exams, right? Um, all right, Sienna, great question here. How do you determine what your target should be? The best way to do that, and so let's say um, you wanted to go to Harvard Law School. And so what you want to look for are these things called the 509 Disclosure Forms. Right? So I'm going to put a 509 Disclosure, Harvard Law. Obviously, you could do the exact same thing, insert name of law school you are interested in. And so here you see Harvard Law School's require disclosures, uh, the 509A. And why do I pull this up? Because the way you want to determine your target score is very simple. Think about the law schools you want to attend and focus in on their 2575 LSAT score range. So I'm going to highlight uh, over here just so you guys can see where I am. I'm on the right over here. Um, and you see Harvard's 2575 LSAT score range is a 170 to a 175. And so that's what you want to use to start to establish your target scores. And for those of you who don't know what that means, what the 2575 LSAT range for law school means is that 25% of the students accepted have lower than the 25 percentile. So for example, here, 25% of the students that Harvard Law School has admitted have lower than a 170. 50% have within that range. So 50% of Harvard's admitted students have between a 170 and a 175. And then 25% of the students admitted have above a 170 or above a, the 75th percentile. So in Harvard's situation here, 25% of the students Harvard Law School has admitted have above a, a 175 LSAT score. So as you look at this information for the schools that you're interested in, ideally, you can be, well, not ideally, worst case scenario, I think you want to be within that range. So if I wanted to go to Harvard, I would hopefully have an LSAT score within the range of 170 to 175, which was me, right? My 174. Ideally, though, if you can get above that 75th percentile, right? So if you could get above the 175 or get above whatever that 75th percentile is for the schools that you're looking at, that is going to give you the best chance of gaining admission. And it's also going to dramatically increase your opportunity to get merit based scholarships, right? Because your LSAT score is not only the number one factor in law school admissions, it's also the number one factor in merit based scholarships. That's the way to think about target LSAT scores. So here's a question that I'm not quite sure. How recent is the ranking of law schools on LSAMX website? I'm assuming you're talking about our rankings that we did last year. We haven't updated it yet for 2020. I know that US News just released their, their 2020 or, or 2021 law school rankings. So we, we should be updating ours very shortly as well. And, and we will be obviously uh, discussing these new rankings, hopefully on the legal level. Uh, it is uh, an idea that I have mentioned to, to Yelena and Brandon because uh, I do think it's nice to see how schools' uh, rankings are changing. Although I will say one thing about every single year that these rankings come out, they're always wrong. There's only one school that should be the number one ranked law school every year, and that's Harvard Law School. And I know Yale and, and Stanford are going to be really upset with me, and you could. You know, if, you, if you're learning about flawed logic, you're probably going to say Maron's super biased. He's a graduate of Harvard Law School. True, true. But I do think that there's, you know, there's an argument to be made that Harvard Law School is the number one law school in the country. Now, I get the class size of 560 students compared to Yale's 140 and, and Stanford's 150 is the reason that Harvard is never ranked number one. But in my world, I felt that that larger class size was an invaluable asset. I was somebody who wanted to go into business. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. You know, you think about the network and the alumni base, having a larger class 
results in a larger network, a larger alumni base. And so that was really invaluable to me. And so obviously some students don't care about that. They prefer smaller you know, classes. Although remember, you know, even at Harvard Law School, they break us up into sections where you know, that class of 560 was actually seven sections of 80 students. So, so that is my one quick little rant about why Harvard Law School should be number one. All right, moving along here. Is the LSAT scored on a curve? Absolutely it is. And you can see here like, you know, the, the, how that works. But yes, it, it is based on a curve. And generally speaking, it's the logic games that determines the curve. Games with a really, really challenging game section tend to be much more lenient with the curve. So like, for example, I took the December 2004 LSAT and I missed eight questions. I missed... Two on one logical reasoning, three on the other, three on reading comp, perfect on game. So I missed eight questions. Generally speaking, when you're in the 170 range, each question you miss drops you down one score. So eight wrong should have been a 172. I got a 174. And if you look at my exam, which was the December 2004 LSAT, you can see why that occurred because my exam was the first time if but only if appeared as a condition on logic games. Um, and, and obviously that threw a lot of people for a loop, including myself. I mean, I, I'll be the first to say, I didn't quite know how to deal with it. I kept sitting there thinking is but the same as and, but seems different than and. I eventually went with, I'm gonna assume that they're the same. So I did double arrow just like and, and it was correct. Uh, but obviously that uh, threw a lot of students for a loop and that's why the, the curve for my exam was a little bit more lenient than you traditionally see. So you're absolutely graded on a curve and generally logic games uh, determines that. Uh, and the reason, again, a hard logic game section is a very different LSAT from an LSAT with an easy logic game section uh, and something that anybody who's been preparing uh, can attest to. All right, so we have another question here about Harvard Law School. It says, Harvard says that the only... They only give scholarships based on need. Oh, absolutely. And that is something I can attest to firsthand. Harvard does not give merit-based scholarships. It's only need-based. And you know, I can tell you a story about you know, a friend of mine who uh, was accepted to Columbia Law School, and Columbia offered him a very nice scholarship. Had been accepted to Harvard, but as Harvard doesn't offer merit-based scholarship, they hadn't offered him anything. And he wasn't uh, in the need category. And so... He actually reached out to Harvard and, and tried to, you know, ask Harvard if they would match Columbia's uh, scholarship. And I, I found Harvard's response to be quite, quite interesting. Their, their response was, Columbia is a great school. You should go there. And, you know, as somebody who actually took advantage of Harvard's need-based scholarships when I attended, I think it's an invaluable program. And I think it's nice that it's based on need, not based on merit, uh, because, you know, Law school, as we always say, is a huge investment of time and money. And obviously, you know, when you graduate with a huge debt burden, it really limits the ability, your ability to pursue your dreams. Um, and so a couple other things to be aware of, though, about Harvard. While they don't have merit-based scholarships, they have need-based. And in addition to need-based, they have uh, what I feel is, is one of the most remarkable programs uh, for any law school, which is this low-income uh, protection plan. And what this means is that you could graduate Harvard Law School with your $180,000 of debt, go take a job in public interest or, or another job that's low paying, and Harvard actually pays your loans back for you. And so again, just something to be aware of as you consider uh, you know, the, the financial aspects of, of law school, Harvard's low income protection program is remarkable. And I would imagine some other schools have similar programs. You, know, you definitely have the 10-year federal program, but that requires that you work in public interest for 10 years, right? Where if you, if you don't do it for 10 years, you don't get anything. Whereas with the low income protection program for Harvard, it's as you're doing it, they are repaying your debt. So it's not all or nothing. All right, uh, I need a true answer. If I have a 2.79 GPA, but a 170 or better, is it possible to get into a T14 law school? Absolutely. And, you know, I know, you know, um, I, I heard Brandon mention that, you know, if you have a low GPA, you can't get into, you know, e, uh, Harvard or Yale or, or Stanford. Well, I, I don't know necessarily think that's true, right? I think obviously Yale and Stanford are extremely challenging to get into regardless because of their small class size. But with, you know, Harvard's 560, I, I would imagine that people with lower GPAs are accepted. Um, and again, you can also see that in their 509 disclosure because 
they give you the same thing for GPAs, right? And so if you look here, 25% of Harvard's admitted class had lower than a 3.7. And so anonymous, I don't know anything about you, but I can tell you this. If you break 170, you will go to a top 10 law school. I can't tell you which one, but the LSAT is that important to law school admissions that if you break 170, you will be accepted to a top 10 law school. I mean, borrowing like, you know, you know, they talk a little bit about this on the legal level, the, the, the moral character portion of the, the application. You know, borrowing, you know, if you're a serial killer, then you're not getting it anywhere. But borrowing something like that, you know, I think if you break 170, you should feel very confident that you will attend top 10 law school. Absolutely. Another question about Harvard Law School. Was your debt at HLS still tremendous even though you got need-based scholarship? Yeah, absolutely. No doubt about that. It was not cheap. I went for about half price. So I graduated with about $100,000 of debt, which I just recently finished paying off too, to give you a sense uh, of how long that, that took. But again, I mean, I didn't go the traditional routes either. I mean, I didn't go to corporate job that was paying me $200,000 a year. I, I was at a startup making zero salary for a while. And then my, my initial salary was about $40,000 a year. And so, yeah, I mean, again, even, even with the, the scholarship, it's still expensive. And again, I think you know, one of the reasons we talk about taking the LSAT so seriously, right? Three years of your life, $180,000 of somebody's money, right? Why settle? Right? And again, we, we completely understand how challenging this exam is. I understand it. As I always say, preparing for the LSAT was the most miserable period of my life without question. I think all of our instructors would say something similar, right? It's a very challenging exam, but if it was easy, everybody would do it, right? So take the fact that it's difficult and put in the time, make the commitment and do the things that most people won't do and set yourself apart. Another question here from Turner, uh, similar, if you have a GPA below the 25th percentile, but get an LSAT score above the 70th percentile, do you have much of a chance of getting it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, remember, the other really important factor that Yelena talked about yesterday is your law school application, right? Notice that the first two years I applied to Harvard Law School, and I talk about this in um, my Q&A on law school admissions, which is free, which is this one here. All right. You can see I have an amazing hoodie collection. But it, I talk about it in this one, about how you know, the first two years I applied, I was waitlisted. And that was with a 99th percentile LSAT score, 99th percentile GPA, right? The reason I was waitlisted is I didn't take my personal statement seriously. And that's what was my Achilles heel. When I took my personal statement seriously, I was accepted. So obviously, again, remember, 2575, don't let it scare you. Don't forget that the 25 percentile, the fact that it's there is telling you that there's a group of students who are able to overcome having a lower LSAT score, lower GPA. Obviously, the way they're able to do that is with a really, really strong application. And obviously, we, we do offer admissions consulting services that we did bring up yesterday. We, we have the essay edits uh, and the, the, the comprehensive packages. Remember, the most important part is the personal statement. That's what I would really spend your time on because that's your one chance to show the person behind the numbers. And so, yes, absolutely. Question here about my major. My major was business economics uh, with a minor in accounting. So nothing related to law school. Uh, and again, as, as Brandon and Yelena both mentioned, it doesn't matter uh, what your undergraduate major is. Remember, the undergraduate major for law school is actually philosophy, right? And the number of people who are philosophy majors is really, really slim anyway. And so it doesn't matter. And again, you know, they can't compare GPAs. It's not apples to apples. That's why they weight the LSAT score so heavily. Uh, so again, uh, spend the time on your LSAT prep and get there. So here's a great question. Do you think this program will help me receive a 170? Well, so again, I, you know, I, I hope that the fact that I was able to do that gives you confidence. I hope the fact that Nas was able to give, do that gives you confidence, right? Uh, we teach you everything that we used ourselves to improve our score. So absolutely. But again, I think, you know, you shouldn't take our word for it, right? I mean, at this point, you know, our testimonials uh, and reviews really speak for themselves, uh, whether it's on, on our website, whether it's in the app store, and you'll see a lot of very similar stories to ours, right? Like if you just quickly glance here at some 
you know, Chris, Chris Dinkle went from the 150s to 174. Austin, 150s to 170, right? You see D'Angelo, 23-point increase. You see Kyle going from the 150s to 170. Uh, so absolutely, we provide you with all the tools you need to be able to dramatically increase your LSAT score. Now, that being said, and something that I would say even when I used to teach in class, right? Coming and hanging out with me twice a week, four hours a day, is not going to get you a higher LSAT score. In terms you will soon understand, it is necessary, it's not sufficient. Because the LSAT is testing a way of thinking, it's very important that you're very proactive and that you put in the time. You have to put in the time to change the way you think. It's the only way to get it done. And so if you're willing to make that commitment with the tools and resources we provide, you should absolutely expect to see your score skyrocket. And again, there's a reason we have our higher score guarantee. We are very, very confident in our ability to increase your LSAT score. But again, remember, part of the higher score guarantee is you do the course, right? We can't stand behind our program if you buy it and don't do the things we tell you to do. And again, remember, not only are our LSAT advisors standing by, I'm standing by. Anybody who's created a free account with LSAT Max not only has my office phone number, you have my mobile phone number. If you want to talk to me about your LSAT prep, don't be afraid. I know a lot of students look at that number and they dial it. They're shocked that I answer. But there's a reason I put that there. Our idea here is not to use technology to put you on an island by yourself for you to figure it out. It's not. The idea is to use technology to break down the barriers, get rid of needless overhead, make things more personalized, but still provide a level of personal support that you cannot find anywhere else. So please do not hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, Thomas, again, the question about the, the major, you know, I chose my major based on being afraid of ruining my GPA, and it was something that I really regret now looking back on it. You know, I wish I would have done computer science or my initial interest was actually philosophy. You know, a lot of people wonder about the beard. Is really, I've always been a, a huge fan of philosophy, but my first philosophy class at, at UCLA scared me straight, and I was worried about failing and, and having a terrible GPA, so I went with Business Econ. Even though Business Econ is, is also extremely challenging, it, it, was very, it was a lot easier for me to navigate. But you know, I regret that decision. And again, the, the GPA is not relevant. So my suggestion is, you know, I would choose your major based on your interests. I think picking things that you're interested in, uh, whether it's your major, whether it's career, uh, will put you in a position to be more successful because you're doing something that you enjoy and that I think the output will, will reflect that. And the last question here from Turner, if you work hard enough, can any reasonably intelligent person get above a 170? This is a great question. And I think obviously, you know, I believe that you can show dramatic improvement on the LSAT. Absolutely. Now, I do think breaking 170, though, is different. Your margin of error is so small. But again, when you look at my story, right, you know, when I walked out of my first practice LSAT, if I told anybody I was going to Harvard Law School, they would have laughed me out of the room, right? But if you can see it, that's my, my diploma's right there. You know, and again, I think, you know, my skill set was not of a person who should do well on the LSAT. Right? My reading comprehension skills were terrible. English is my second language. You know, business econ, undergrad, I didn't read for my major. So I had a lot of work to do. But not only was I able to dramatically improve, right? I hope that my story shows you something beyond the fact that this is a learnable skill. There's a point of no return. Right? And I think all of our instructors can attest to this, right? How could I go from preparing for the LSAT, which again, as I, as I mentioned before, was the most miserable period of my life without question, to making a career out of it. Once the exam clicks, it's a completely different thing. And if you, you look at that story that I, that I, that I dropped the link to about you know, my, my logical reasoning epiphany and how that minor adjustment was a point of no return for me, where not only did I break through and achieve my target score, you know, I tell this to students all the time, if I took it today, tomorrow, next week, next month, I would get a perfect score. You know, definitely on, on games and reasoning, reading comp, I probably have to you know, do a little bit of practice to get back up to speed. But again, I'm not saying that to brag. I'm trying to emphasize that there's some pattern there. And it's a lot easier to see that pattern on logic games, right? It's a lot easier to see that you know, people in a race is the same thing as scheduling firefighters working during the week. It's a lot harder to see that uh, mistaking sufficient for necessary 
logical fallacy in this logical reasoning question is the same as in this logical reasoning question because the subject is different. And obviously, the imperfection of the English language allows us to convey the same logical concept in so many different ways, right? So the, the idea of diagramming comes from it. We can extract the formal logic out of the passage in a vacuum, two plus two is always four, right? And so I think that, you know, I hope that my story shows you that it's learnable and it even takes a step further that if you approach this exam the right way, why we always talk about, you know, why it's so important that you have the right foundation in place and why it's so important that you make an informed decision on your LSAT prep when you're starting. Because if you learn stuff the wrong way, right, and if you look at some of these companies that, you know, require lower LSAT scores for instructors, and there's some companies out there that don't require any LSAT scores to teach or tutor, right? And you, you have a foundation that's not the proper foundation, you have to unlearn all of that stuff and then relearn it. Whereas if you approach it the right way and you get that foundation in place from the start, the time you put in will show remarkable results. And so with that, I hope you guys found this session to be helpful. Uh, as always, please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions or we can help in any way. And again, this is the last of our back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back webinars. But obviously, if you are an LSMX student, uh, the office hours are going to be coming every day for the rest of this month. And, and obviously, uh, we will keep a close eye on this quarantine situation and continue to provide you guys with incredible resources that will allow you to unlock your full potential and just like myself, get you accepted into the law school of your dreams. Uh, thanks again for everyone coming out. Claire, thanks again for putting these on. And uh, looking forward to seeing you guys soon, uh, seeing you guys again very soon. And in the meantime, please stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are with everybody.